Hello my friends and welcome to another Battletech Tactics Guide and really a discussion on abilities due to popular demand. I'm making this video guide to abilities now. I spent the the last few days sort of thinking about all the things I wanted to say and um, unfortunately there's no way to make this less boring than a than a simple discussion but I'll at least try and make it interesting. So the abilities have changed since version 1.3 and they've settled and so um, you know it's now safe to talk about them as it were. Uh, most people have sort of got a feel of what the new abilities are like and they don't seem to be changing anymore so these are the abilities that we are um, stuck with for now, or will be using, at least until the summer when the new expansion comes out. So, <clears throat> the first thing is, I just wanted to establish that an ability doesn't need to have changed between versions to have been nerfed. Um, and you'll co we'll come to understand what I mean by that as we as we go through this discussion on uh, on the abilities but some of the abilities have not actually changed and yet have been dramatically nerfed and some weapons have been nerfed as well and uh, it will all it will all make sense i promise so without further ado let's start with um multi shot so multi shot is one of the the best opening abilities in my opinion if you take the, the first set of abilities that you can unlock as the openers and the second set as the finishers uh, multi-shot is one of the ones which I always start with which I call an opener skill and I always start with it for two reasons one is that it's very good and the other is that um, it's part of the gunnery tree so you get more chance to hit if you build up this this uh, set of skills first um, now a lot of people sort of are thinking in the distant future and they're like no I want my pilot to have this set of abilities and I'm going to go for them straight away but you know if you're doing a career or something similar your pilots will never be um, they'll never be like 10 10 10 10 until until the the career is basically over or you know with maybe a hundred or two hundred days left to go so you do have to take into account the here and now when you're picking abilities you can always build up pilots for uh, for different builds later on when you're doing harder missions and you can earn more EXP faster. But anyway, we're getting slightly off topic here. So multi-shot allows you to uh, target three enemies, up to three enemies, uh, with whichever weapons you wish. And there are a lot of uses for it. For example, engaging with different enemies at different ranges to make sure you can use all your weapons, or evasion stripping. Uh, multi-shot has actually gotten a boost in this patch because of more importance being placed on evasion. So all in all, it's a good ability. It's one that I start with, which is why I've got it ringed in red here, opener skills. And um, you should take it. Now, breaching shot is the opposite. It's been nerfed dramatically. It's a skill that I used to use a lot. And I don't use it anymore. And the reason why is because when you so you're playing against the AI, and the AI has certain strategies, certain things which it always does. And one of those things that it does or likes to do is it likes to move at you and brace, move at you and brace, move at you and brace, until it can engage you, until it can fire at you. It likes to just move at you and brace. Well, the thing is, bracing got nerfed dramatically, down from 50% to 20% unless you have Bulwark, which is uh, now what I call an advanced cover skill, where it basically amplifies cover that you already have. And because of that, there isn't much opportunity for Breaching Shot to actually be that great. And when you're facing off against a horde of enemies, say, you know, a whole lance, it's inevitable that at least two or three of them do not have Bulwark. So, those two or three can be very rapidly picked off with just normal normal attacks without breaching shot. Because you remember that with breaching shot you only have, you're only allowed to use one weapon per target, which forces you to fit large weapons and also give up that concentrated firepower. Well, you don't have to do any of that now because the AI is more likely than not going to only have 20% defense. So, you might as well just unleash 
your alphas on them and not take breaching shot. So unfortunately, breaching shot effectively got a massive nerf because all those times when the AI is sat there 50%ing it up, it's not going to be doing that anymore. So anyway, um, despite it not changing, the environment has, has changed around it. Breaching shot is pretty bad now, and I don't use it in any of my builds. Moving on, sure footing is like ability that is sadly um, one step away from greatness, as it were, because, so it gives you an extra evasion, which is nice. But it only gives you entrenched, which is uh, reduced stability damage, um, if you're not sprinting, jumping, or running into melee. And all the times <laughs> that you would want to uh, improve your stability, or make yourself more stability resistant, is when you're sprinting, jumping, or charging into melee. So basically, um, it's the ability that gives you extra stability when you don't need it. <laughs> so it's basically a non a non-helpful ability um, and I don't like it but it does lead to ace piloting so unfortunately you will have to take it and it does give an extra evasion token so it's not it's not a dead to you ability it at least will give you uh, that extra bit of uh, defense moving on bulwark which is the advanced the advanced cover ability there is a whole sort of can that we can open about what this ability does but effectively what it does is when you have defense already which is now 20% so you braced you now get 20% defense you're in cover you now get 20% defense you vigilanced so you get 20% defense it then adds an extra 20% and obviously you can stack those three things together so you can be in the forest and vigilanced so you get 20% for each, plus your Bulwark gives you 20% extra. So basically, Bulwark is an ability now that gives you an advanced and extra 20% defense. Now, the new Bulwark has effectively led to the massive nerfing of LRMs, machine guns, um, I suppose SRMs a little bit. And I'll explain why. So damage is reduced and rounded down and what I mean by that is if you only had a 5% defense bonus you would still take one less damage from an LRM so an LRM does 4 damage and you had 5% defense doesn't exist in the game just an example you would take 3 damage because it rounds down um, spare damage what that means is at 40% so Bulwark plus Cover, or Bulwark plus Vigilance, um, or Bracing plus Bulwark, at that 40% cover level, you effectively get a 50% damage reduction against standard LRMs. They're still doing two out of four damage, like, like they used to do when it was 50%. And um, with machine guns in particular, it's really nasty because a 40% reduction uh, results in a 2 damage drop bringing the damage down to 1 because you have 3 damage 3 damage is obviously 33% for each 1 and 40% is just over the threshold of 33 resulting in a 2 damage reduction for machine guns so LRMs and machine guns got massively massively nerfed by uh, Bulwark and even though the 30% drop in bracing, so from 50% defense to 20%, that drop in defense from brace um, is severe for, for most weapons. It's, it's still actually pretty good against LRMs because of this rounding problem. Um, so the bottom line is <coughs> uh, Bulwark is actually not that good and bracing is not that good anymore except against uh, machine guns, LRMs, and to some extent SRMs, low damage weapons, because of these thresholds. Whereas the bigger weapons, they just get the percentage reduction. So ironically, Breaching Shot, which is not a great skill now, is actually still quite useful if you are a massive LRM spammer, because of the way that Bulwark works. So Bulwark is actually 
a pretty good skill and I use it in my opener but it's nowhere near as powerful as it was compared to the advanced strategies of double turns and LRM bunny hopping or LRM spamming which is still a very powerful skill though not as powerful as it was but we'll cover those two as we get to those now coolant flush is an ability that gives you a 50% uh, 50% 50 flat uh, heat reduction and then over the next couple of turns it heats you up by 8 and then you can obviously reduce it again basically it's just a big pile of extra heat sinks it's a pretty decent ability um, in terms of the finishers it's nowhere near as powerful as ace piloting or master tactician but if you are opening with multi shot and bulwark for your early game then coolant flush makes sense to take just because it's a decent ability and breaching shot no longer is unfortunately for breaching shot mm, excuse me sensor lock now reduces accuracy by one but what does that mean well for you it means not very much sensor lock is still not a very good ability at all except in the case of the LRM spamming tactic um, but for the AI it got massively buffed because all those turrets and uh, vehicles and op 4 that can't quite see you but have got this ability have now got the ability to, to tank your accuracy since it stacks um, and with Bulwark being reduced in, in power, um, it is very easy for the AI, for three or four AI turrets to pretty much hobble or entirely disable a mech, reducing all of its evasion, reducing its chance to hit by one, two, three, four, depending on how many times sensor lock has been stacked on it. Um, these penalties count and they do hurt. So there's a real potential for... Um, for the AI to abuse sensor lock against you. For the player, it's still as useful as it always was, which is not very, except in the case of an LRM type sniping, spamming strategy. So it is what it is, but you will have to take it to get Master Tactician, so yeah, good luck with that. Okay, so I've left these two here, Ace Piloting and Master Tactician for last, because I was always of the opinion that Master Tactician was the best skill in the game because Master Tactician enables the double turn. To get a double turn you typically need to go before the enemy. So you reserve past the enemy and then you go and then on the next turn you go before the enemy because of your because you've got Master Tactician or because you're a lighter weight class and you go again and that's the essence of the double turn. Now what Ace Piloting does is it lets you attack then move. And what that potentially does is make your double turn way more powerful. So if you um, if, so you reserve past the enemy, you come out of cover and you attack. And then if you have Ace Piloting, you can attack again and then jump back into cover or otherwise move into cover. Whereas with Master Tactician, of course, you just have to move back into cover. So you, you're only getting a shot one, once every two turns, but the whole double turn strategy is to never take any return fire at all. So ace piloting always felt like the weaker skill because it didn't, it didn't enable you in any way to get double turns. But with the introduction of the Cyclops, it is possible to take ace piloting, be the same weight class as the enemy, and still get double turns. And that is very very powerful. So there is a lot to consider between these two skills now. So anyway, um, we've spoken about all the abilities. I think they're all pretty decent apart from Breaching Shot to be fair. Um, Master Tactician and Ace Piloting have gotten closer to each other in terms of power level. Um, Coolant Flush is obviously slightly behind them but because it's on the Guts tree and you, you most likely open Multi-Shot Bulwark in the beginning of the game, at least if you play like I do, um, coolant flush is just there because you you have to take it. Um, but later on, when you get to specialize your pilots, um, I, I use two strategies, which is obviously the the LRM spammer strategy, which I actually don't use so much anymore because it's so boring to play and it's boring to watch, but it is very effective. And then there's the double turn strategy, which I use all the time. You'll notice that I've ringed four things with the double turn strategy, and that's because 
if you use it with multi-shot, you get great flexibility, and if you use it with bulwark, obviously you get defensive options. So you have two choices with the strategy. Okay, so let's go and explain these these strategies and what makes them so good. And for this, we're going to do a little bit of paint. Okay, so here's a whiteboard I prepared earlier. So with multi-shot, so with Bulwark being weakened, um, a lot of the, the use of multi-shot is to simply strip evasion. So if you have two enemies, and they have a certain level of evasion tokens, okay, and we're going to just say that these are Jaeger mechs. I'm just going to draw their arms on just to make life easier to understand. They're going to look like little sweets, which is which is cool. So with multi-shot, this would be my A target and this would be my B target. So I fire all my weapons at A, apart from one weapon, which I fire at B. And by doing that, I then strip evasion from both at the same time. Now with the Jaeger, it's got a lot of firepower in one place. So eventually, probably on my second set of multi-shots, I will then wipe out the arm. So let's just fill that in right there. Okay, so I'm gonna wipe out the arm now, which has got the AC5 and the AC2 in it. Now it would require a lot more firepower, probably the rest of my lance's firepower, presuming that my lance is also heavies, to actually wipe this Jaeger mech out. But because I've been evasion stripping, the B, the uh, Bravo Jaeger mech has also now lost most of its uh, its ability to evade. So we can now dump our last two sets of shots into the uh, into the Bravo target and take out his arm. And what we've achieved here is that we've actually we've actually taken out a full Jaeger mech's worth of firepower here because we've gotten half of this one and half of this one. We've opened them both up to being killed now, or being disabled, or captured, or, or whatever. And it's much more efficient to do this than it is to actually focus fire down one target and then move on to the next one. Because breaking an arm on a mech that has most of its weapons in its arms is so much easier than actually coring it out. Even if you've smashed the arm off, you've still usually got the right torso and the whole of the CT to go through to actually finish the job. But with multi-shot, and obviously you can you can go for up to uh, three targets with multi-shot. It could be a Charlie target. Um, you can rip these arms off pretty quickly and thus dramatically reduce incoming firepower. So this is the the reason why multi-shot is one of the best abilities in the game. And you're always outnumbered, so there's always room for a multi-shot to to benefit you, especially in the case of a double turn, because in a double turn you will have seven or eight moves to take before the enemy gets to go again. So in that seven to eight moves, your first two or three moves can literally be to strip all the evasion away from all from all the targets that you can see. So you can then unload into them. Right. So we'll get rid of all that. Right, LRM spamming is a very simple strategy, which is where and you don't have to use LRMs, but LRMs are are usually how it is done where you have your uh, your LRM spammer, you have some sort of wall or something between you and the OP4, and you have your, your OP4, I should use the, t the shape tool here, and what you want to do is very simple, is one, sensor lock, two, unload missiles, three, jump away. Now, obviously, you can't you can't sensor lock and move, but you don't have just the one the one LRM spammer. You know, you have your whole you have your whole lance. And what you usually do is, depending on you know ammo, positioning, all that kind of thing, all of them have got sensor lock. All of them have got um, ace piloting. And so say this one's furthest, this one's furthest away. So we sensor lock with this one. These three, these three up here will all launch their missiles 
at the target and then they'll all jump back and then you'll repeat the process of so now this one's the furthest away so this one will sensor lock and the rest will jump back and you just launch jump back launch jump back launch jump back you don't even if you start doing it early enough or an open terrain you don't even need a wall to actually do it you can just harass the enemy constantly and all the AI will do is it will walk at you brace walk at you brace walk at you brace as we just discussed that does a lot less for the AI now than it used to it's only a 20% reduction although that reduction is more severe against LRMs it's 25% and if they get a 40% brace then it's going to be a full 50% reduction like it used to be but this strategy is still very powerful and very annoying and there's very little that uh, that the AI can do about it. It has no clue how to deal with it. Um, it's very safe and it's very uninteresting and that's why I don't do it. But the correct setup for it is there. Which is to go for sure footing, ace piloting and sensor lock. And just, just do that over and over and over and over and over until the AI is dead. Um, it's a late game strategy because early on your mechs don't have the, uh, the tonnage or the flexibility, really, to, to mount enough LRMs to sort of get away with this. You, um, you want to favor deep pockets of ammo over having massive launches because it's just a matter of time until you win, basically. Um, and people say, oh, the maps are so small, so you can't get away with it. You can. Just follow the edge of the map. Just jump all the way around the edge. Just go around all the terrain that the AI can't handle cliffs, mountains, ditches, ravines, forests, you name it. Because you're jumping, you're always moving. After you've launched, you're always moving for at least four or five tiles away. And uh, if, they're, if they're moving and bracing, and they're going through forest or, or any terrain whatsoever, they will never catch you. The AI has no clue how to deal with it. So this is still a very powerful strategy, and that is why ace piloting was or is a great ability now the thing is now you've got the cyclops you can have the the double turn capability of master tactician baked into it so there is really huge potential for um ace piloting to be the best skill in the game if you're willing to bring that cyclops along to get your master tactician baked in but if you're not willing to do that then I still think Master Tactician slightly edges out uh, Ace Piloting in terms of abilities. So anyway, in conclusion, and I'm sorry if this video is a bit boring, but I just don't know any other way to sort of deliver the knowledge other than to just deliver the knowledge. Um, so with the, do the double turn thing has been deeply covered in another video with an in-game example. So if you haven't seen my video guide on double turns, uh, go and watch that. It's a lot more interesting than this one because I've actually got a game where I can demonstrate how it's done against an OP4. Um, double turning is just as powerful as it ever was. Um, I would consider it to be a mid to late game setup. You can do it early on just based on the fact that you're in lights or mediums and they innately have a low um, initiative. So you can double turn your way through through the enemy because the enemy will typically always have slightly better better or heavier mechs than you. After all, you don't have any mediums until you've faced mediums and captured them. You don't have any heavies until you've faced heavies and captured them, typically, you know, if you're not farming sea bills and buying them from the shop. So you don't need Master Tactician in the early game. And in fact, Ace Piloting, if you could get it early, it would be very powerful. But in the late game, when you're heavy and they're heavy, or you're Assault and they're Assault, that's when you need Master Tactician to get your double turns and um, still remains a very powerful ability. Now whether you want to go with Bulwark with it or whether you want to go with Multishot, I'm torn. They're both very useful. Multishot is as, as good as it's ever been if not better because of the sheer weakness of bracing, especially without Bulwark and the AI loves to do it and that Multishot will let you get rid of the more important evasion tokens from many targets. And, um, you know, conversely, Bulwark does offer great survivability on, on a lot of maps. But I would say the Bulwark is quite map dependent. Um, 
you know, previously it just worked all the time and you got your 50%, but now it uh, only works when you gain defense for some other reason. So in lunar environments, um, badlands, even some water worlds, it, it doesn't really offer you any extra utility. Um, you know, for example, one classic thing with Old Bulwark would be to stand in the water, get a 50% defense bonus, and just unleash massive alphas over and over again because of that extra cooling because of the water. Well, Bulwark and water is kind of useless, effectively, unless you're going to use Vigilance, which you're not going to have the resolve to be doing that for a whole lance. Um, it's not going to do anything for you, whereas Multishot really shines in that environment. You have a lot of extra firepower. You can spread it around and get maximum efficiency out of it. So anyway, um, it's been a bit of a long discussion this one, but the basic conclusion is that all the abilities are actually in a pretty good place apart from Breaching Shot, which is the one ability that no one is discussing at the moment, but it has been nerfed massively, at least against the AI. Now, against humans it might have a place, but against the AI really isn't necessary anymore. The days of the AI bracing for 50% and chasing you across the map are, are gone, they're dead, and uh, the 20% reduction, while still effective against LRMs, and the 40% reduction being more effective, um, is much rarer, and it's, it's not uniform across all of the OP4. So there is always someone that you can you can put firepower into. Um, so unfortunately, it's a bit of a a bit of a weak ability, but the rest are all pretty good. So all in all, I think it's a very balanced board of abilities. Um, and lastly, I just say, you know, when you're getting started, make sure that you also consider the breakpoints for um, some of the more important pilot upgrades, we want to call them, pilot traits. Um, and what I mean by that is, if I just bring up me, my paint again. So I'm going to use orange this time. If we go for tactic six, there is the cooled shot bonus here. Gut six, there is the, um, is it gut six? The plus 15 heat threshold. And uh, gunnery six is where you get your 15% bonus, which is one of the better, the better levels, if you will, to have your gunnery bonus at. So just just consider getting these these points first. This what I would so called six 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 um, skill set in your early game before you consider end game. Um, abilities basically don't run before before you can walk in terms of abilities. Pick up the um, pick up the six in each of these three categories before you pick up a finisher, because you're going to benefit from that in the in the short term a lot. You can always worry about hiring pilots with great skills or with particular skill sets later on in your career. Was in your campaign, all your characters are going to end up 10, 10, 10, 10, and it's not going to matter. But in terms of the campaign, just keep in mind, I usually go for Gunnery 6, then Gut 6, then Tactic 6, or Gut 6, then Gunnery 6, then Tactic 6. Something roughly in that order, because I want these to reach these thresholds, because you get a big, a reasonably big power boost at each of these points. And that's it. I hope that answers all the questions. I'm sure it probably doesn't. So if you have any questions about abilities, drop them in the comments and I will do my best to answer them. And I hope this helps somebody. Oh, and Merry Christmas.